You are muted, Dr. Variani. You are muted. Good evening to all of you, and welcome for this last lecture of IMA FCGP course. First of all, I wish you all a very happy Diwali. Thank you, Dr. Rani. Happy Diwali to you also. Yes, happy Thank Diwali you. to all of you all. So today's last lecture will be by Dr. Padma Iyer, Madam, on thyroid disorders. Dr. Padma Iyer, Madam, is trustee of IMA Pune. She is a practicing surgeon at Vadgao Sheri. She is past president of IMA Pune. Also, she is past senior vice president of IMA Maharashtra. She is panel consultant at Inlex Mudrani Hospital. Also, she is consultant surgeon in Telco Panel. She has received Women Empowerment Award from National President's Office in 2018. She conducts medical services. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, she gives free OPD services to patients in her clinic. Every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, it is free OPD. As well as every Friday, there is free OPD to patients of Vagoli. Also, she has served in many medical camps arranged by Art of Living Pune at Merkel Village. I hand over to Dr. Padma Yer, Madam. For a talk on thyroid disorders. Thank you, Dr. Variani, for those kind words, and it is a pleasure and honor to be able for for being invited to talk on um, about thyroid disorders on this uh, FCGP um, program examination. So I'll start sharing my screen. So thyroid actually, you know, it is a, a big topic, uh, disorders of thyroid. But I will be touching upon uh, the various this thing. So it is uh, not going to be. It's only a bird's eye view. Okay. So we'll start with the program now. Thyroid gland is an endocrine gland shaped like a butterfly. It is located in the lower part of the neck, just below the voice box. It is made up of Two lobes, right lobe and the left lobe, each about the size of a plum, cut in half, and these two lobes are joined by a small bridge of thyroid tissue called the isthmus. It makes two hormones that are secreted into the blood: thyroxine and triiodothyronine. These hormones are very essential for all the cells in the body to work normally. It helps regulate metabolism. the process by which body turns food into energy it also plays a role in keeping organs functioning properly and helping body to conserve heat thyroid disorders are very common in fact about 12% of people will experience abnormal thyroid function at some point during their lives thyroid disease can affect anyone men women infants teenagers and the elderly it can be present at birth you know about congenital or hypothyroidism and it can develop as you age often after menopause in women women are eight times more likely to develop a thyroid disorder than men and there are many predisposing factors and these are the following few ones if you have a family history of thyroid disease you are more likely to have if you have a medical condition like pernicious anemia type 1 diabetes primary adrenal insufficiency lupus autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis sjogren's syndrome and turner's syndrome and if you are on a medication that is high in iodine like amiodarone which is given for arrhythmias in cardiac patients and if you are older than 60 especially in women and if you have passed had taken treatment for a past thyroid condition or cancer then also you are likely to have those thyroid dysfunction and predisposing factor the major one is diabetes if you are 
have diabetes, you are at a greater risk of developing thyroid disease than people without diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. You already have one autoimmune disorder, so you are more likely to develop another one. Regular testing is recommended to check thyroid issues in type 1 diabetes immediately after diagnosis and then every year and then the people with type 2 diabetes. There isn't a regular schedule for testing if you have type 2 diabetes, but type 2 diabetics are more likely to develop a thyroid disease later in their lives. Everybody knows about these two disorders, that is two main types of thyroid disease are hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Both conditions can be caused by other diseases that impact the way thyroid gland can function. Of these two, hypothyroidism is more common than hyperthyroidism. Conditions which cause hypothyroidism are thyroiditis. It could be a viral inflammation of the thyroid gland. Thyroiditis can lower the amount of hormones the thyroid produces. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is very well known for hypothyroidism. It's a pain-led disease. It's an autoimmune condition where body cells attack and damage the thyroid. So this is an inherited condition and it requires replacement therapy for life. And there are other rare conditions like postpartum thyroiditis. This occurs in 5 to 9% of women after childbirth. It is usually a temporary phenomenon. Iodine deficiency. Iodine is used by thyroid to produce hormones. And iodine deficiency is an issue that affects several million people around the world. And you know people in Himalayas or the other places where iodine deficiency is there, they are more likely to get hypothyroidism, but these days because of the fortified salt, that incidence has come down a lot. A non-functioning thyroid gland. Sometimes the thyroid gland does not work correctly from birth. There is some dysfunction right from the beginning. So this affects about one in 4,000 newborns. If left untreated, the child could have both physical and mental issues in the future. All newborns are given a screening blood test in the hospital to check their thyroid function, irrespective of whether their mother was taking a treatment for thyroid or not. All newborns are checked. Uh, conditions that produce more hormones, that is hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease. In this condition, the entire thyroid gland might be overactive and produce too much hormone. This problem is also called diffuse toxic goiter. Nodules. Hyperthyroidism can be caused by nodules that are overactive within the thyroid. A single no nodule is called toxic, autonomously functioning thyroid nodule. Well, a gland with several nodules is called a toxic multinodular goiter. It can be a toxic multinodular goiter or without um, hormone production, only a cold nodule that also could be a plain multinodular goiter. Conditions in hyperthyroidism, also thyroiditis. This disorder also can produce hyperthyroidism because the hormones which were stored in the thyroid were released when the thyroid gets inflamed. This can last for a few weeks to months. Excessive thyroid. When you have too much iodine, the mineral that is used to make thyroid hormones in your body, the thyroid makes more thyroid hormones than it needs. So excessive iodine intake in some medication as told earlier and also in some cough syrups, it can cause more production and hyperthyroidism. Symptoms of hyperthyroidism are experiencing anxiety, irritability, nervousness, having trouble sleeping, losing weight, having an goiter, having muscle weakness and tremors, experiencing irregular menstrual periods. to heat, having vision problems, exhaust 
Symptoms of hypothyroidism are forgetfulness, having frequent and heavy menstrual bleedings, having dry and coarse hair, having a coarse voice, experiencing an intolerance to cold. The diagnosis of thyroid function abnormality or a thyroid mass is made by taking a proper medical history and a physical examination. As part of the exam, doctor will examine your neck and ask you to lift it. Exactly. Yes. Any problem? Dr. Variani, is there any uh, issue? No. First, the slide was not moving. Is there any? Uh, okay. The diagnosis now it's moving, na? Yes, yes, it okay, is maybe okay the now. Internet connection. I just yes, yes, oh, yes. Okay. The diagnosis of thyroid function is by, as I told, medical history and physical examination. As part of exam, your thyroid um, neck is examined for the thyroid gland. You may be asked to swallow during examination, which helps the examiner to feel the thyroid and also any nodule or mass in it. In addition, blood tests, imaging studies, or fine needle aspiration will be required. How is the diagnosis made? Evolution of the larynx or vocal cords with indirect uh, uh, laryngoscopy or a fiber optic telescope also is examined. Ultrasound examination of your neck and thyroid, blood test of thyroid function, a radioactive thyroid scan can be used to diagnose the uh, cold and hot nodules, a fine needle aspiration biopsy in case uh, uh, ca cancer is suspected, chest x-ray if you have any obstructive symptoms, and a CT or MRI scan. A fine needle aspiration biopsy is a safe, relatively painless procedure with this, a hypodermic needle is passed into the lump and tissue fluid samples containing cells are taken. Sometimes ultrasound guidance is used to guide the needle into the nodule. There is little or no pain and very few complications with this procedure. This test gives more information on the nature of the lump in the thyroid gland and it helps to differentiate a benign from a malignant or a cancerous thyroid mass. Thyroid, the specific blood test which we order for thyroid disorders, they are thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, which is produced in the pituitary gland and it regulates the balance of thyroid hormones, including T4 and T3 in the bloodstream. Most of the time, thyroid hormone deficiency Hypothyroidism is associated with an elevated TSH level, while thyroid hormone excess is associated with a low TSH level. If TSH is abnormal, then the measurement of thyroid hormones directly, including thyroxine, tri triiodothyroidine, and also free T4 and T3 also may be done further to evaluate the problem. Normal TSH range for an adult is 0.4 to 4.5 milli international units per liter of the blood. T4 is test for hypothyroidism and hyper and used to monitor treatment of thyroid disorders. Low T4 is seen in hypo, whereas high T4 levels may indicate hyperthyroidism. Normal T4 range for an adult is 5 to 11 micrograms per deciliter of blood. FT4, free T4 or free thyroxine is a method of measuring T4 that eliminates the effect of proteins that naturally bind T4 and may prevent accurate measurement. Normal FT4 is 0 0.9 to 1.7 nanograms. Likewise, T3 also, we do plain T3 also free T3, which is helping to diagnose hyper if it is more and in low T3 levels are observed in hypothyroidism. And the normal range is 100 to 200 nanogram per 
deciliter. FT3, again, it eliminates the effect of proteins that naturally bind T3 and may prevent accurate measurement. Normal FT3 is 2.3 to 4.1 picograms per milliliter of blood. Thyroid antibodies, especially in thyroiditis, autoimmune thyroiditis, we need to identify the reason for hypothyroidism. So common thyroid antibody tests include microsomal antibodies, also known as thyroid peroxidase antibodies or TPO antibodies, thyroglobulin antibodies, also known as TG antibodies, and thyroid receptor antibodies, which include thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins and also thyroid blocking immunoglobulins. Additional tests in selected cases are calcitonin. This test is used to diagnose C-cell hyperplasia and medullary thyroid cancer, both of which are very rare thyroid disorders. Thyroglobulin, this test is used to diagnose thyroiditis and to monitor treatment of thyroid cancer. Treatment of hyperthyroidism, I'll be just touching up on this, antithyroid drugs, metimazole and propyl thiourosine. Ma'am, slide is not moving. That stop thyroid sorry. from making excessive hormones. They block I, the conversion of I think it, internet uh, connection is precursor to T4 or T3. T3. Hmm. Nay, I am still not finished yet. I'm still on the same thyroid uh, slide. Yeah. Radioactive yeah. thyroid in iodine. This treatment damages. <laughs> okay. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'll change the connection. Bear with me for if. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, how is the preparation going on for exam? It's a difficult task. <laughs> <laughs> then the paper will be very simple. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. madam. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Is the slide yes. seen? Is the slide yes. seen? Slide is not yet seen. Uh, is it seen now? No, you you have not yet share screen. You have not pressed. Na? Again, I have to share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it seen now? Can you see it? Not yet. You are muted, madam. Padma, madam, you are muted. Nee. Your voice is not coming. Huh. 
now it is okay but the screen has not yet come Mm. Madam, have you pressed that share screen button? Madam, we we can't hear you. You are we can't hear you. Madam, can you hear me? Ah, now we can hear you. First, op open the PPT, then share screen. If I open the PPT, I cannot share the screen. Uh, you have to minimize it. Minimize it. Okay, okay. Take it. Huh. Now share screen. I have put the share screen, but it's not coming. Maximize it. Can you see? But sharing is not it. Because I am sharing the screen, but it's not seen. Can you see? No. Then share it. I'll just see. Uh, now yes, can you is. see? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it has come now. Now it is come. Yes. Uh, shall I make it full screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. You know, these <coughs> things keep happening. <laughs> okay. And um, nodules, hyperthyroidism. One second. A non functioning, can you hear me? Uh, some internet can problem is there, here? I think. Can you hear me? Yeah, but voice is breaking. Can you hear? The slides are moving. Yes, yes. Means some internet problem is there. Can you, you hear? You can go on. You are muted. You are muted. Uh -huh. Now it is okay. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear? Yes, madam. Dr. Variani, can you hear? Voice is breaking. Again, you are muted. Uh -huh. Now it is unmute. 
Yeah, yeah. Again, it is becoming mute and unmute. Suddenly, it is changing. Now it is muted. Are you doing it or it is changing on its own? Can you hear now? Yes. Can you hear now? Yes, um, yes. Uh, I have not done anything. If I touch on now again muted. Mm. But we can hear you. It is going on its own. One sec. Dr. Variani, huh? here, no? again, yeah. I'll have to do the share screen. Or the screen is there. Uh, now, voice is clear. Okay. Yeah. But I have to again share the screen. No? Yeah, yeah. That green button is there, share screen. Okay. Can you see it? Not yet. One sec. No? Yes, yes. But this is a different screen as seen. No, but you will open the PPT, huh? Then it will start. Okay. Ye yes. Take it, take it. Um, now the connection is okay? Yes, yes, okay. yes. I'm sorry about this. Yeah. Um, Ultrasound examination of the neck and thyroid, blood test and all, radioactive. We have already finished this. Fine needle, thyroid, TSH, T4, T3. Uh, from here we will go. Yeah. Again, it has gone to first. Mm. Huh. Antithyroid drugs, I, we were in this. So, for treatment of hyperthyroidism is antithyroid drugs, metimazole, propyl thiouracil, radioactive iodine, which damages the cells of thyroid, preventing it from making high levels of thyroid hormones. Beta blockers, these medications don't change the amount of hormones in your body, but they help control your symptoms. Surgery is more a permanent form of treatment in hyperthyroidism, where a portion of thyroid is removed to stop it from creating excessive hormones. However, one needs to take thyroid replacement hormones for the rest of the life. The main option for hypothyroidism treatment is only thyroid replacement medication. This drug is a synthetic way to add thyroid hormones back. One drug that is commonly used is called levothyroxine. By using this medication, you can control thyroid disease and live a normal life. Indications for thyroid surgery. The most common reason for thyroid surgery is the presence of nodules or tumors on the thyroid gland. Most nodules are benign, but some can be cancerous or precancerous. The fine needle aspiration is reported suspicious or suggestive of cancer, then surgery is indicated. Even benign nodules can cause problems if they grow large enough to obstruct the throat or if they stimulate the thyroid or overproduce hormones. A condition called hyperthyroidism 
as said before surgery can correct hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism is frequently the result of autoimmune disease called graves disease uh, there are several types of thyroid surgery the most common are lobectomy subtotal thyroidectomy and total thyroidectomy lobectomy sometimes a nodule inflammation or swelling affects half of the only half of the thyroid gland when this happens only one or one of the two lobes is removed the part left behind retain the little or all of its function subtotal thyroidectomy removes um, nearly 3/4 of the thyroid gland but leaves behind a small amount to preserve the thyroid function many individuals who undergo this type of surgery develop hypothyroidism a condition that occurs when thyroid does not produce enough hormone this is treated with daily hormone supplements the other types of surgery or total thyroidectomy removes the entire gland thyroid and thyroid um, nodules and other tissue this surgery is appropriate when nodules swelling or inflammation affect the entire thyroid gland or when cancer is present robotic thyroidectomy is another type of surgery called robotic thyroidectomy in this surgeon can remove all or part of the thyroid to an axillary incision via the armpit or transorally via the mouth total endoscopic thyroidectomy can provide a good neck cosmetic effect and improve post operative quality of life because of the small and hidden incisions potential side effects complications of thyroid surgery or bleeding bleeding under the skin that rarely can cause shortness of breath requiring immediate medical attention evaluation injury to recurrent laryngeal nerve hypoparathyroidism hypothyroidism thyrotoxic storm injury to the superior laryngeal nerve and of course infection um you need to tell your patients to take medical immediate medical attention if numbness and tingling around the lips and hands increasing pain fever swelling wound discharge shortness of breath some symptoms may not become evident for 2 or 3 days after surgery if you experience any of the following you have to inform your surgeon thyroid storm is a rare and life threatening condition that happens when thyroid suddenly produces and releases large amount of thyroid hormone it is usually caused by a sudden event or illness or surgery which is a sudden stressful event or an infection the symptoms of thyroid storm are rapid heartbeat high temperature diarrhea jaundice severe agitation and confusion loss of consciousness thyrotoxicosis and thyroid storm thyrotoxicosis is a common endocrine condition that may be secondary to a number of underlying processes thyroid storm is represents the severe end of the spectrum of thyrotoxicosis and is characterized by compromised organ dysfunction organ function treatment of thyroid storm consists of supportive measures like iv fluids oxygen cooling blankets and paracetamol as well as specific measures to treat hyperthyroidism beta 1 selective adrenergic receptor antagonist should be selected as the first line for tachycardia in thyroid storm high dose of propyl thiouracil or methimazole may be used in the treatment of thyroid storm to inhibit the conversion of t4 to t3 after initial supportive measures a beta blocker should be started for any case of suspected thyroid storm propranolol is preferred agent for beta blockade in hyperthyroidism and thyroid storm due to its additional effect of blocking the peripheral conversion of inactive t4 to active form of t3 two more common common side effects specific to thyroid surgery which are also called as iatrogenic compl complication or damage to recurrent laryngeal nerves and damage to the parathyroid glands that control the level of calcium in your body hypocalcemia is the most 
major post operative complication of total thyroidectomy with a the reported incidence of 3 to 52% and permanent hypocalcemia resulting ranging from 3 to 52% and 0.4 to 13% respectively the primary cause is secondary hypoparathyroidism following damage to or devascularization of one or more parathyroid glands during surgery hypocalcemia patients were considered to have post operative significant hypocalcemia if they had a post operative serum calcium level of less than 8 mg per deciliter on at least one laboratory test or if they developed hypocalcemia related symptom numbness and tingling in the hands and soles of your feet and around your lips some patients feel a crawling sensation in the skin muscle cramps severe headaches in rare cases patients may have cramping and rigidity of muscles especially in the hands and legs a treatment of hypocalcemia is again a uh, emergency a calcium infusion is indicated for severe acute or symptomatic hypocalcemia the standard mainstays of oral therapy or calcium supplements and activated vitamin d3 the increased risk of hypocalcemia following total thyroidectomy plus ne central neck dissection can be minimized by routine administration of oral calcium and vitamin d supplements during early post operative period recurrent laryngeal nerve is one of the most common complication of thyroidectomy which can lead to post operative vocal cord palsy the incidence ranges from 1.5 to 14% the right recurrent laryngeal nerve is more susceptible to damage during thyroid surgery because it is close to the bifurcation of the right inferior thyroid artery invariably passing in front of behind or in between the branches it it produces abductor laryngeal paralysis the accurate diagnosis can be made only by visualizing vocal cords while the patient is awake this requires indirect laryngoscopy as soon as possible post operatively when the patient complains of hoarseness of voice what a damaged voice box feels like it's a chronic hoarseness for more than 2 weeks a stray a such a raspy or breathy voice a voice quiver pain or limp in the throat while speaking changes in the speech right laryngeal nerve injury usually presents post operatively within with voice changes and hoarseness and most patients recover within one year can recurrent laryngeal nerve be repaired i mean if it doesn't recover then immediate intraoperative repair of the rln include if it is been totally severed severe direct end to end anastomosis free nerve graft anastomosis ansa cervicalis tendon to rln and vagus to rln and primary interposition graft these are uh used techniques of nerve repair include micro suturing use of fibrin glue and nerve grafting the post operative care we will discuss which will be mostly useful for the family physicians the american thyroid association recommends to keep the thyroid patient in an head up position at 45% degree fowler's position in post operative in icu following thyroidectomy to prevent hematoma formation on the incision site by facilitating venous return from the head and neck uh, after care patient may resume most of the normal activities the day after surgery however they have to wait at least for 10 days or until your doctor gives you permission to engage in strenuous activities such as high impact exercise your throat will probably feel sore for several days you may be able to take a pain medication such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen to relieve the soreness if these medications don't provide relief you, you may require narcotic pain relief like uh, you know you may require tramadol or other combination after your surgery you may develop hypothyroidism if this occurs you may have to take lifelong some form of levothyroxine to bring back your hormone levels to balance it may take several adjustments and blood tests 
to find the right dosage for you. Following surgery, if it is determined that you need to take any medication, your surgeon will discuss with you prior to your discharge. The medications which may include are thyroid hormone replacement, calcium and vitamin D replacement. Um, if a malignancy is identified, thyroid replacement therapy may be withheld for several weeks. This allows radioactive scan to better detect any microscopic remaining thyroid tissue or spread of malignant cells to lymph nodes or other sites in the body. So you don't do it immediately. The replacement therapy is withheld for several weeks. How often should thyroid levels be checked after thyroidectomy? A previously normal TSH level should be rechecked at least twice a year in an asymptomatic patient post-thyroid lobectomy or to total thyroidectomy. A previously abnormal TSH level should be rechecked in at minimum seven weeks or two month intervals until levels stabilize. What all should be monitored after thyroidectomy? It is important to monitor both calcium and magnesium levels after total thyroidectomy and to correct deficiencies to facilitate prompt resolution of symptoms. At a follow-up care visit, doctor will conduct a physical examination and blood test to watch the level of TSH suppression and to test for thyroglobulin. If the thyroid gland has been removed, there should be little or no thyroglobulin in the blood. How often should thyroid levels be checked after partial thyroidectomy? Thyroid function tests were measured two to three months after surgery. Patients with normal thyroid function levels checked repeatedly every six to 12 months thereafter. Patients diagnosed with hypothyroidism diseases were reassessed every three to six months. What should be the level of thyroglobulin after total thyroidectomy? The normal value of thyroglobulin is three to 40 nanograms per milliliter in a healthy patient. If a patient's thyroglobulin level is found to be increasing after all of the thyroid gland has been removed, the patient may have a recurrence or a differentiated thyroid cancer. How much levothyroxine should I take after thyroidectomy? In patients without thyroid cancer, levothyroxine treatment is frequently initiated at the dosage of 1.6 microgram per kg of body weight following total thyroidectomy. How can I boost my metabolism after thyroidectomy? Cardio exercises including walking, jogging, biking, swimming and aerobics and also help to boost metabolism. Higher intensity cardio exercise is more effective in improving metabolism than lower intensity exercise. So try a more intense class at your gym or incorporate interval training into your exercise routine. Can I live a normal life with a thyroid disease? A thyroid disease is often a lifelong medical condition that you will need to manage constantly. This often requires daily medication. Your treating physician will monitor your treatment and make adjustments over time. However, you can live a normal life with a thyroid disease. It may take some time to find the right treatment option for you and control your hormone levels then people with these types of condition can usually live a life with, without any many restrictions. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your excellent talk. Thank you. Are there any questions for Madam? I'm sorry yes. about all those. Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit of internet, this thing, I'm sorry about that. That usually keeps on happening, whatever you try to do. Yes. Okay, ma'am, I want to ask one question. If uh, if we check the thyroid, uh, thyroid function test, we do thyroid function test, and TSS level is in normal limit, but T4 level is high, then what is this condition? See, a T, a TSH also, you know, if the, the T4 level is more, usually by the feedback, you know, the control, it has to be that even the TSH will be below normal. But in very rare cases only, it becomes 
and sometimes it can be a, you know it can be called as a, a symptomatic hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism or hypo it this aberrations are seen inflammatory does not that feedback mechanism is not proper there so for that you have to have more uh, tests to be done you know thyroglobulin or antibodies to find out why it has not affected the uh, feedback mechanism that uh, you know counter mechanism if thyroxine is more uh, tsh reduces if tsh is more this hormones increase that is the normal uh, we uh, have that balance homeostasis okay thank you ma'am okay. and you. if some patient is diagnosed with the hypothyroidism like if their csh level is high more than uh, 20 25 like this so if we start the treatment directly or we can uh, we can start the treatment you know start slow yeah start slow but if you are not getting if the deficiency is not controlled then you will have to do the thyroid antibody test you know peroxidase antibodies epos are to be done to know whether it is thyroiditis which is causing the compromise um, in the thyroid function so more tests need to be done if there are any aberrations which are not normal the feedback mechanism of the tsh and t4 t3 are not there functioning properly you may have to do more tests to find out why it is so okay and i mean pregnant women what is the range uh, of tsh level at which we start the treatment or yeah. a, uh, yeah. for we don't actually wait for 4.5 it should be less than less than if it is 2.5 and above one need to start the treatment because that is essential in the uh, pregnancy the level of tsh where you start the treatment or lower than other um, otherwise we will start at a, a higher level where is in pregnancy tsh um, less than 2.5 okay thank you uh, ma'am what is the treatment for hashimoto's thyroiditis like uh, if the patient is hypothyroid it's an autoimmune disease it has destroyed the thyroid it's a viral this thing autoimmune disease if it has destroyed the thyroid tissue the treatment is lifelong thyroid replacement levothyroxine it's like a you know after thyroid removal because the tissues are damaged and then they don't regenerate if they partial regeneration may be there but if it is totally destroyed you may have to Uh, give lifelong uh, thyroxine replacement so steroids don't have any role in that uh, autoimmune uh, maybe disorder maybe in the initial active stage when you have diagnosed with that antibodies a short course is there to prevent the um, the disease process from damaging the tissue once the damage is done the steroids don't have any role so when the active disease is there only steroids have a role like how we do it for all autoimmune like rheumatoid sle and all that okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am ma'am if i have a patient of goiter uh, with a hypo with a low uh, tsh but a uh, small swelling so should i send to a surgeon or i just treat it and nay nay small swelling hypothyroidism you can't you will have to give replacement and that in itself prevent the i mean treat the goiter you know that you must have done it also is yes, it yes 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 yeah. so uh, if there is a high tsh in an elderly person like mm. can or so mm. and should i start the thyroid uh, treatment or should i send to a cardiologist for a cardiac evaluation yes or? yes yes as you said because elderly people are now these days hyper may not be that common but if it is there because of the risk of arrhythmias it is hyper. always better to have a uh, instead of us starting it is better to have a cardiac evaluation and then go ahead with the treatment 
whatever they suggest and along with you can take a help of an endocrinologist also for adjusting the dosage and for a radio, where do you use radioactive iodine and where do you use anti thyroid medication ha huh. see anti thyroid medication after a certain this thing you can't keep on increasing it and they have their own side effects also so in um, people who have actually completed their family and um, who are not going to all little bit middle age or older people uh, for uh, hyperthyroidism we recommend uh, radio iodine uh, because it uh, is a uh, single this thing and they don't have to take the medicines which with lot of side effects and whereas uh, newly married or people who are desirous of having family you can't use that you have to use the anti thyroid drugs and once it is under control then they should be asked to you know they can ask to take chances for pregnancy sometimes there is hyperthyroidism in pregnancy and patient has no symptoms so should i just leave it and keep repeating or should i refer to an endocrinologist mm, in pregnancy it is always better to refer hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism it's mild hyperthyroidism yes. hyper no. or hypo hyper 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 ha uh, hyper you should refer because then anti thyroid drugs are not in the first 3 months of trimester first trimester you know they may have some uh, organogenesis ka they can interfere so we should not take risk so it is better to consult a endocrinologist and also keep in loop uh, the gynec obstetrician treating also but whether hyperthyroidism can affect the baby because hypo can affect but whether hyperthyroidism can affect the baby but see in both the cases if it is going through the uh, placenta and it is going to affect so we never know so whatever it is that has to be treated so whether we can treat with which medicines that only a specialist will be able to tell unfortunately i am not an expert in that sorry about that okay. um, i have seen a patient with a calcium low level uh, after a thyroid surgery so for how long they should be given a calcium supplement um suppose see uh, which um, if the parathyroid glands are removed then maybe it is for a long long time but if it is only a temporary phenomenon post surgery and again the parathyroid you know again they can also regenerate then you may have to give for 6 months to 1 year otherwise if you have to keep on checking the parathyroid hormones also calcitonin and all find out and um, that's it you have to give at least for minimum one year is recommended and afterwards if there is deficiency continues then it has to be continued because if the total parathyroids are removed iatrogenically by mistake or during surgery of a large goiter this can happen thank you so much Uh, ma'am uh, if there is a patient of uh, multinodular goiter with normal t3 t4 tsh level mm -hmm. and uh, if he has some symptoms like palpitations or tachycardia uh, occasional vpcs in his ecg so mm -hmm. should we treat this patient or not see symptomatically you can give but a multinodular goiter usually it's a big goiter which causes the pressure symptoms also so you are saying t3 t4 or normal but still the patients are complaining of the uh, symptoms of palpitations so why it is so so are we missing something maybe you will have to do the free t3 t4 and find out uh, uh, because the actual uh, t3 t4 may not depict the correct value because of the protein binding so if in that case you will have to find out and then you know um, whether to be given the treatment or not you know free, free t4 t3 is also normal that's also normal then i think ideal person will be an endocrinologist okay ma'am thank you thank you thank you dr padma madam for yeah, an excellent thank. talk yeah with your you. talk we end the lecture series of this iim fcpp so it's my course. pleasure and honor also you know okay thank you thank you madam thank you thank you thank you all participants for bearing with me uh, when the net went off sorry about that
Okay. Thankful to all the participants for participation in this course. So we will and meet all now. the best. May all of you come out with flying colors and get your convocation. So it will be done in IMA Pune. It will be a very great function. We all will attend that. Okay. All the best to all of you. Do come, everybody. Please come at quarter to ten on thirtieth October Sunday. Come fifteen minutes before time. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Happy Thank Diwali Dr. to Vriyani. you all. Thank you, Doctor Vriyani. Thank you all participants. Happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Varyani, for giving me an opportunity. Thank and you, uh, uh, wish you a very, very happy Diwali. Okay. And a relax till 30th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay, madam. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Dipin. We are very thankful to Dipin from DigiShield. Dipin. Mr. Deepin Mehta. Deepin, thank you very much. We have finished for the day now. I think he is... Has he left already? No, no. He is there. He will... Must be busy somewhere. I will phone him. Recording. Hmm. Ha, finish over. Ha. So today all lectures are over. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay madam. Okay, thank you.